Welcome to the Big 12 Insiders, your Big 12 sports show. Here's your host, Brian Hanley. Hey, everybody. What's going on? This is your man, Big B, Brian Hanley. Welcome to Big 12 Insiders. Today, we are doing a checkup on BYU um, sitting atop of the Big 12 rankings. We got our man, Mitch Harper, who covers BYU for 24-7 Sports with us today. Uh, so we'll just kind of go through a couple of things, you know, BYU's on their bye week, just do a little checkup here. So before we get into that, remember everybody, remember to like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Continue to leave those comments. We absolutely appreciate your everything that you guys have done to help grow the channel and all your interaction with us. So um, get into this. Mitch, first things first, my man, how are you doing today? Doing great, Brian. It's been a, a wild ride so far with BYU and been jam-packed with with content and and insight so it's it's been a wild ride and, and this bye week comes at a good time to get ready for the final stretch absolutely i guess my first thing uh that i that i have to ask man is you're sitting at eight no um I, and i say you byu sitting at eight no um they're atop of the big 12 conference playing well it, 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 did anybody and i mean this from coaches, fans, players, anybody associated with the BYU program, did anybody see this coming at the beginning of the season? Kalani Satake, he did. And, you know, he, he had this, if you go back to Big 12 Media Day, he had this almost, you know, uh, it was direct confidence that, oh, you'll see media. You, you'll see. When you watch the games, you'll see what we're – what we're going to be showing this year. And, you know, Kalani is never acts like that. And, right. you know, there, there was a, there was a confidence about him with this group now, but then there's the offensive coordinator, Aaron Roderick, who said, you know, we feel like we're a better team, but we got to prove it in games. And I feel like sure. that was more the, the, the sentiment, but I think internally a lot of players and coaches did believe this team would be a lot better because they retained the roster and uh, they made a lot of steps forward with the development. But, on the outside, it was easy to look at BYU as maybe just a six-win team. That's what I thought. You know, six, seven right. wins on the high end. Right. Now they're eight and zero, and uh, you know they've hit it out of the park with uh, you know their defense. I thought they've been playing well, and then Jake Retzlaff has been very good for BYU, and and that was a big question coming into the season that you know Gary Bohannon pushed him in fall mm -hmm. camp, but I think that made Jake Retzlaff clearly better uh, in the long run, and now he's comfortably in that QB one chair and, and BYU's riding high atop the big 12 standings. Yeah. You know, the thing that, and I know we talked at the beginning of the season uh, and I talked to, and just listened to BYU players and coaches at big 12 media day. And we kind of all agreed, Mitch, it was like BYU. It was the physicality last year that they just didn't play with. Now there were some injuries and things that maybe didn't allow for a lot of that, but they, I don't think they underestimated the physicality of the big 12, but they just didn't have it last year. And that was the one thing. And I've been stressing that to people that they talked about it last year er, in media day, that they didn't have that last year. They do this year, Mitch. And that I believe, look, there's a lot of different things that you can look at, but for me, just the outside looking in, I think that that is a huge part of what's going on in their turnaround is that they have come with some physicality that nobody thought they were going to come with this year. No question. And, you know, BYU has been stout in the trenches. Defensive line is a huge upgrade on offensive line. They, you know, parted ways with the former offensive line coach, Daryl Funk, brought in TJ Woods as the run game coordinator, and that's paid huge dividends. That group has been night and day different this season, particularly left tackle Caleb Etienne, a former Oklahoma State transfer. He's been outstanding to where, you know, NFL scouts are showing up uh, at BYU practices and they're inquiring you know, about Caleb Etienne. He's 6'8", 325. He's got all the, the measurables. Now he's putting out great film, and that's right. exciting for him. So th this BYU team is physical, and, you know, th they've they've also had some breaks with the schedule. You know, when we were talking, I really felt that they were playing the, the best teams in the Big 12, at least what it seemed to be, but that right. flipped. And <laughs> and now it's it's a relatively light Big 12 schedule, at least what's been played out so far. And, you know, it set BYU up to where they could maybe be an undefeated football team. It's, it's right. wild, but they've got everything in front of them to, to reach Arlington, which I don't think anyone expected. 
Right. Here's the thing about that, though, Mitch. I'm going to I'm not necessarily pushing back on you, but I, I'm just not going to allow for the the rhetoric that's out there. And I'm not saying you're putting it out there because people are trying to discredit what BYU's doing by saying, well, it's a light schedule. Look, they didn't put the schedule together. And at the beginning of the year, just like you said, everybody thought that this was going to be a really, really tough schedule. It's not their fault that other teams have fallen on their face and that they are better. Well, so, and, I and, mean, and, they, and they still have wins over K-State and, yes. and SMU. And, yes. the, the, and the thing is, is what's been impressive about BYU this season, because I'm with you, I think the notion that, they're a fraud is inaccurate. Uh, you know, this is a, a really sound football team that plays, you know, complimentary football. They really do. Mm -hmm. They don't have the eye popping stats in any particular side of the ball, but they just have this balanced effort and they've dominated teams, you know, Arizona, yeah. they, they soundly beat them. And that was a big national showcase game with big noon kickoff. And they just took care of business. And, you know, this past week against UCF, BYU was comfortably in the lead and then UCF turns their fourth string quarterback risk. And, you know, he had some success and tacked on two touchdowns, but really BYU was, was rolling in a game. They were an underdog, which I don't know how that happened. So it, it BYU is a good football team and, you know, because of their logo and because of uh, preseason polls and I think a lot of it too, and we, we love the recruiting rankings. We, we believe in them at 20 at 24 seven and, and, the, the composite, but I think far too many in the media, the national media, they do these hypotheticals of, well, this five-star loaded team has got to be clearly better than this team with a bunch of high-end three stars. But it's like you see the development of some of these players like an Isaiah Glasker at outside linebacker for BYU, a six foot five, 235, probably one of the best athletes at the linebacker position in this conference. Y y that doesn't show up in the recruiting ranks, but man, he's a legit talent now. And that's kind right. of the, the theme of this league is that this league has an ability to get, you know, middle three star guys and turn them into high end four stars, five stars at the college level. Yep. And I don't think that people get enough credit to that because, and that's a credit to the coaching staffs in this league, but particularly at BYU Kalani Satake. I mean, the, the culture that he has created, has been impressive, and I, I hate to kind of use that because you can't measure it by a stat, but getting that whole roster to come back after a season where they looked, you know, pretty bad for most of the season. The last two games of last year, they they showed signs that they could compete, but everyone came back of significance from last year, and, and I think that chemistry and, and that culture and that willingness and the commitment from BYU admins to, you know, put resources to have NIL retention Right. Uh, it's it's paid off for BYU, and, and now they're in a spot where they feel like they can compete against anyone. And look, I, I think in a, a playoff setting, if they could get there and, and reach that, like, why not? Why not BYU? Yeah. Because anyone in college football has their flaws this year. No one is un unbeatable, and nope. that's why I'm so glad that there's a 12-team playoff because this is the perfect year for that. Absolutely. You know, and that's why, and I know we talked before, that's why I thought BYU was the perfect fit in this conference for just what you said is that you can't measure coaching and you can't measure the development and people don't put enough stock into that. They just think, you know what, once you get to college, you have to be a finished product and that can't be further from the truth. I'm not saying that having five stars doesn't help you, but you know what, if I have a three, three and a half star, whatever, and I work them up into somebody that how many guys are going to get drafted from the big 12 this year? I mean, there'll be several guys. How many of those guys are five star guys that came out of high school? Zero. So it, coaching does matter. I know we don't like to think that it does, but actually coaching and develop matters. Um, you, Jake, you mentioned Jake Raslav earlier. Um you know, he got pushed, like you mentioned, at the start of the season. He was kind of a question mark. Uh, but the way that he's playing right now, and I'm not saying that he's perfect, but he's playing some really good football, Mitch. Uh, you know, you just take a look at him. Uh, I think what he brings, not just throwing the ball, but also with his legs, because I think he won the Oklahoma State game two plays before the final play uh, when he ran, what was it, 27-yard yep. scramble, um, I don't know why Oklahoma State was in man coverage in that situation, but whatever. Um, that's again, that's not his fault. But it, that that scramble to me, that's what won the game. I know we love the throw and the catch and the move, but to me, it was that scramble that won that football game. I think he's playing some really good football right now, Mitch. I agree. And you think about 
how far he's come even this season. You and I were both in Dallas for that BYU-SMU game where he had some late-game heroics in that one and put BYU in a spot to win that game, but he didn't look great, and right. it wasn't pretty <laughs> that night in Dallas and thinking, uh, does BYU need to turn to Gary Bohannon? That was in week two, right. uh, but you know Jake has gotten better every single week, and you know, I think that's that's impressive. You know, he started out 0-4 as the starter at BYU. Now he's 8-4, quite the turnaround uh, for, for Retzloff. And, yeah, you're right, with the, the running ability, he has been much better on that front. And I don't think people give him enough credit for that. He's not the, you know, uh, elite uh, runner. Like, BYU's seen some great runners at quarterback over the years. Steve Young way a long time ago and, and Taysom Hill uh, mm-hmm. less than a decade ago with the beginning of Kalani's era. But, you know, Jake is, is pretty good and he is effective. And for a long stretch due to the, you know, revolving door of injuries at the running back position, he was the leading rusher for a while until LJ Martin, the, the number one running back took that spot this past week at UCF with another 100 yard performance. But uh, Jake's doing some great things. And it's been interesting to see his presence with being the QB one, the spotlight that's coming with it. He's really embracing it. You know, he's, he's very, fun and engaging in the post-game press conferences and interactions with the media, very uh, candid answers. And that's a guy that knows he's comfortably in the chair because earlier in the season, he didn't have that demeanor uh, in the post-game press conferences because there was still a feeling, I think, from fans wanting maybe that QB2 to take the spot. So Jake settled in nicely, and uh, I'm curious to see how he continues to evolve. And, man, he's he's just made so many uh, leaps and, and strides this season, he's so comfortable with this offense, too. He knows it inside and out. I think that's one of the big reasons he's playing so well is he knows the playbook and he knows the tendencies of what Aaron Roderick expects. And he's got a lot of autonomy now suddenly of this offense and, and BYU is operating at a high level. I mean, they're scoring more than 30 points every single week in these big 12 games. And, and that's that's impressive considering there's some good defenses in this league and to con- consistently put up more than 30 is going to always put you in a spot where you can win any game. Yes, it does. Um, you mentioned the running game. You know, it had uh, several, uh, you know, running backs injured, you know, early in the season. Uh, we talked about that when we, me and you, kind of had a, a short little chat at the SMU game. Guys got hurt in that game. Um, but now they're back. And that was the one thing that I think a lot of people had questioned, okay, can BYU run it? When they're going to need to be able to run the football, can they run the football? Well, BYU's found a running game. Is it more because of the offensive line is kind of t- taking control, or is it more they've gotten some guys back and they're now healthy? Or is it both? I, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I mean, but I-, I do think that LJ Martin, the sophomore running back, he's got star potential. And, you know, this league's got a high bar for what expects him from running back positions uh, or running back players. Uh, but, you know, LJ could be in that next here maybe next year and, and beyond to be you know a, a star running back in this league maybe a, a potential all-conference guy down the road okay. uh, he's been really good I mean LJ has been you know 101 yards last week 121 against Oklahoma State he's got great patience and vision in the backfield and I just think you're starting to see him emerge as that leader uh, in the backfield he's been you know he got a little bit gimpy and banged up he had a bruised knee against UCF so he didn't get the chance to close it out against the Knights in Orlando. But, you know, Hinkley Ropati, too, ha- has done a right. solid job. He got banged up in that SMU game, and, you know, he's worked his way back, and he's playing with some uh, – playing playing quite well as as well. So it's a one-two punch. And, you know, BYU also has Sione Imoa, who had a breakout performance against Kansas State, uh, where he was the, you know, fourth-string running back being uh, thrown in as the starter because of all the injuries. He got banged up after that K-State game. And he's been out since then, but he suited up for the UCF game. He is available if needed. But so they got some depth there. They feel confident with the numbers they have now. And that's a good sign heading into the final month of the season. Gotcha. You know, one of the, in my opinion, look, I think it's one of the more underrated groups in the country that a lot of people aren't talking about because look, let's just be honest. They're not going to talk about big 12 defenses very often. But I think BYU's got one of the most underrated defenses in the country. They get after you. They're physical up front. Um, Tell me a little bit about some of the things that they may be doing this year that they weren't doing last year. Other than, and don't get me wrong, I understand they're they're controlling 
uh, the line of scrimmage. And maybe that's all of it. Maybe that's the, the the important part here is that they're controlling the line of scrimmage. But I just think it's one of the more underrated defenses, Mitch, uh, in the country. Not just the Big 12, but in the country. They have a lot more speed this year at linebacker. Uh, Jack Kelly, number 17, the Weber State transfer. He's a redshirt junior. He came in as a four-star transfer from Weber State in the portal rankings. And uh, he's lived up to the hype. And, you know, he's got four sacks this year. His closing speed, too. Uh, is is top notch. I mean, he's had moments where he he brought down Ring, Garrett Rangel from Oklahoma State, uh, Jennings at SMU, and those guys are fast quarterbacks. And he closed in on them and and made some plays. Those were two of his sacks that he's had this season. So Jack Kelly's speed, Isaiah Glasker, Harrison Taggart, that linebacker unit is is a strength of BYU's defense, and they just got more playmakers too on the defensive side. Jacob Robinson, I think, gets slept on quite a bit. You know, and this is a league that has Travis Hunter, the best football player in the country. Uh, and, you know, he's a, he's a DB, can do it all. But I think, you know, Jacob Robinson's a great defensive back, too. I think he's one of the better DBs in this conference this year. And he kind of gets overlooked a bit because he's only 5'11", and his his measurables don't look, uh, you know, awe-inspiring. But, man, he's a heck of a football player. And when teams throw on his side of the field, it, it usually doesn't go well for those opposing offenses. So, uh, they, they, they and they stayed healthy too, Brian. I, I think that you know that's been a key for BYU is that the years where Kalani teams took dips, they were just hit just so hard by injuries. And, and this year, by all accounts, I mean they've been pretty pretty healthy. Where you're seeing week after week the same eleven uh, starting out games, and you know in years past they were trotting out stats that said BYU's had more starters than nearly anyone else in the country, and that was in large part due to the injuries. So they've right. stayed healthy. And I think that also, too, there's an understanding of the, this the defensive scheme. Like, this is a scheme that dates back to, you know, Kyle Winningham, Utah. Jay Hill brought that over from Utah, and, and he had he was the head coach at Weber State of the FCS ranks. There's a lot of buy into this scheme. And I think, you know, players have said that being in year two of this scheme, where, again, going back to the retention, everyone came back, and they're just playing faster naturally because they know what to do. Last year, the coaching staff had questions about players – buying into the scheme and it kind of showed itself on the field with some underwhelming results and, and some blowout losses in big 12 play. But, but this year they are completely bought in. They know this scheme inside and out. And I just think it's allowed this, this group to play a bit faster than you'd think. I mean, this is a pretty quick BYU football team and more athletic than I think people give them credit for. Absolutely. Uh, look, I'm going to get you out of here on this. Obviously by week you mentioned comes at a really good time. Uh, and then the Holy war, um, Look, my late brother, he used to love this matchup. It wasn't so much that he, you know, he followed BYU or Utah. He just liked watching the game because it was nasty. It was a nasty rivalry. Uh, I don't expect anything less. I know Utah is down. They're struggling this year. Uh, but I don't think that really matters, to be honest with you. You can tell me more about that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm assuming BYU and BYU fans are looking forward to it. It's a big game. Uh, to kind of catapult them. Look, they got to win the rest of their games to get where they're trying to go. Uh, but I, I imagine that BYU and their fan base and players, coaches, everybody, they're really looking forward to this football game. No question. I mean, th this is a special rivalry, and BYU and Utah, I mean, it's – these games live in the, fan, in the fans' souls for both sides. I mean, they just can, you know, pop off the memories instantly. They, they just – even though both sides say they don't need each other and they hate each other and they don't want to be part of each other, these two, when they are together, and I think Kalani even referenced it this week in his uh, bi-week presser, that they do kind of need each other. And I think that they can build up each other too, uh, being in the same conference. And I think having a power conference stage like the Big 12 will be great for this rivalry. A little bit disappointed that it was a you know Big 12 after dark spot. You wanted to see maybe yeah. a little bit better TV window to give this thing a little bit more airtime, a little more eyeballs. Maybe, you know, BYU's top 10 ranking can can help that cause. But but this is a great rivalry. And, you know, I think that this is a year where it just feels like BYU is the clear-cut favorite in this one, where Utah's just got so many questions at quarterback with Isaac Wilson and Brandon Rose. Who are they going to go with? I would think it's going to be Isaac Wilson, I would think, in that game. But just where are the playmakers? They had that season-ending announcement loss uh, to Money Parks, and Utah's a team looking for answers. And 
is it is it enough for a team that had playoff aspirations coming in to just solely beat BYU? I, I don't know anymore. I feel like that's that's kind of Utah of the eighties and nineties. I think right. that fan base has kind of felt like they've evolved from just solely saving a season by beating BYU. Yes, they want to win that game, but uh, it's an interesting dynamic because, uh, you know, for a long time, I think Utah felt like they had moved past BYU, going to a couple of Rose Bowls, being in the Pac-12 where BYU was independent. And now suddenly the, the momentum of the programs in state has flipped and it'll be interesting. But Utah's got talent on the defensive side and they can get, cause a lot of headaches for BYU. And this could be you know, a game, you know, potentially that's, you know, 16 to 13, it, it could be that. I mean, there's been many BYU-Utah games that have been in that space of, of scoring. So, uh, you know, if BYU's offense that we've seen to this point shows up, they should win uh, comfortably, potentially, uh, which doesn't happen often much. I mean, these games always come down to the wire, and, you know, BYU hasn't won in Salt Lake since 2006. So it's been a minute since they've won up there, and, and it'll be challenging. It'll be a hostile environment. It's going to be... Uh, quite the scene and to have the the big 12 logo on that field and to have that on the jerseys i think it, it adds to kind of bringing back a, a new era of, of byu utah in a power conference setting absolutely man well mitch hey man i want to thank you again man you're always so gracious with your time i appreciate what you've done to to help support the channel and giving us your time today man thank you you bet brian always a pleasure to talk with you and uh, talk some big 12 football Absolutely. And thanks, everybody, again, for watching. Just doing a BYU checkup. We love talking to Mitch uh, and BYU fans. Should be a good game coming up next week. Uh, take a breath this week, though. You got a bye week. Just relax. Have some fun. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching the Big 12 Insiders, your Big 12 sports show. This has been a Spirit Street production.